how would you survive a zombie apocalypse in Boston? I watch a lot of Walking Dead, <laughs> but I think I think I might be in my bag. I'm not sure. I feel like I'd I'd survive for a little while. So I, I think first is secured area, rations, weaponry, and if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out swinging. Ah, my name is Why Try, and this is my golden hour. All right, well, welcome back to another episode of GDP, the Director's Cut. I am so happy to be joined this week by Dimitri, welcome. Yes, my name is Dimitri, I also know why I try. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, yeah, and that's actually a great place to start, Dimitri, do you just wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, my name is, yeah, like I said, Dimitri also knows why I try. Um, I'm a recording artist, engineer, producer from every Massachusetts. I guess I'm an actor now, after <laughs> being a part of the movie, and um, yeah. And um, how did you meet Connor? I met, <laughs> I met Connor like 20, 2018 when he first started doing the Golden Deer podcast. He reached out, reached out to me to do an interview. And we had to do like three interviews because mm -hmm. like the first one got lost. And so I came back in to do the second one. The second, but the second one, the file got like corrupted or something like that. I forget. <laughs> you have to ask Connor. He'll tell you like, he remembers this story by heart. And yeah. the third one that had come out, I was in Rhode Island and I said, I could probably meet you on this day to come back and do it. It didn't work. So Connor and Hector ended up driving up to Rhode Island to do like the third episode in like this girl's house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a funny time. And me and Connor have been like cool ever since. Yeah. So how often do you see Connor? Where are you based now? I'm still based in Everett right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Connor. It's a great question. I don't see him a lot, which is crazy. Uh -huh. but when I see him, it's always for like a long period of time. I would say I see Connor like three, like three or four times randomly every like six months, something like that. When was the last time you saw Connor before the movie? Wow. That's a great question. I have no clue. Last time I saw Connor before the movie. Um, Does he FaceTime me about the part? Does that count? Yeah, sure. We okay, can talk I guess, about yeah. I guess when he FaceTime me about the part. And how did he uh, how did he pitch it to you exactly? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he called me. He was like, um, yo, try, young Denzel. I got I got something I want to pitch to you. And I'm like, all right, what's going on, man? He's like, all right. So I'm doing a movie. And it's a post, it's a post-apocalyptic zombie movie. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be super fun. We have all the crazy effects. You know, we have all the great guys to be a part. And I have a part that I think you'd be perfect for. I'm still working out the kinks, but once I have it, I'm gonna let you know. I'm like, okay, cool. And then um, I think a couple of days went by. He sent me a script. He was like, "All right, I would love for you to send me an audition for you auditioning for the role of Adam." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So like, I practiced it for like a day, and then I, I sent it back, and he was like, "I love it. You're in." <laughs> yeah. And what did you think of the script when you first met when you first read it? Well, I, well, I first <laughs> I first saw the skip. I, I mean, the script. I didn't like. I didn't get it at first, but then I kind of saw how my character evolves and kind of talks throughout the movie, and I was like, okay, I get it. This is something I could do for like bring to life. And um, it was my first time doing like a, I guess, uh, acting role, full like full fledged, full blown acting role. So it was super dope to be a part of and. I'm very really excited to see the the final version and uh, yeah, see how I look on the screen. And how do you That's think uh, your acting process went? How did you really approach the role as a first timer? <laughs> I, hmm, that's a great question. I think when I first got it, I tried to really put, my, so my character Adam is, like I said, um, Connor's character's best friend and also a little brother of the, uh, another character. I'm, I'm pulling the blank on, on his name right now, but- um, That's okay. 
I kind of just, I don't know. I feel like I try to put myself in the, in the shoes of a hard headed, but a hard headed, but um, kind of annoying, but at the same time, my heart's in the right place, little brother. Mm -hmm. And yeah, kind of went on it like that. Did you draw inspiration from anywhere? No, not necessarily. I think I, I think I just was like, all right, from the heart. Fuck it. Yeah, from the heart. And it's like, fuck it. Let's let me see what I can do on my own. Yeah. What were your experiences on set like? It was different. It was it was cool to be on like an actual set. If everything felt like an actual set and everything felt like we were there to work. It was it wasn't really it was fun, but at the same time, it wasn't really fun and games. We were all there for work, like to work. I was there for like two like I was like three maybe like yeah like three four hours at a time mm -hmm. and um just going over like my script and going over and like continuously shooting different shots and angles and making sure that we got the best scene every time so that was super dope and uh yeah it was I was like oh yeah well, this is we're really just shooting the movie this is tight I like this this is dope yeah like I was 100% down and 100% like committed to make sure I could like do the best part I had and also like even timing i made sure to show up to set on time i made sure to leave when it was like only necessary for me to leave i tried to be as committed as possible to you know kind of bringing letting like giving connor the best part that he wanted that's good acting practices you know there's a uh, saying in show business that you should always leave a space better than you found it so i think, yeah, I think that, that shows that you're a, a good a good yeah. promising star <laughs> Wasn't your uh, this isn't your first time being a performer, of course, but did you have any stage fright or any sort of fear while you were up on stage and on the camera? No, but I think my problem was I like I think a problem I had while shooting the movie was giving too much or giving the wrong um the wrong facial expression with the correct with the correct emotion, if that makes sense. <laughs> and uh that's something that I saw a lot and people mentioned during the set. I try to face it as much as possible. And I got it towards the end, like towards the end of my character being needed in the movie. We got it. But uh, that was definitely different to like kind of get the hang of. Like sometimes I was like over the top or sometimes mm -hmm. I was like under. And it was just kind of finding that perfect pocket. My yeah. character existed. So it was dope. Yeah. And now, so of course the movie is wrapped in filming and it's yeah. now on to editing. Um, what do you hope to see next for you in the movie spotlight at all? Do you have any interest in doing more acting? Oh, 100%. I would love to. This was awesome. Like I would love to definitely be a part of like more independent movies and just, um, I don't know, kind of be in that space because I personally write screenplays. So like I've been getting into writing that so I, I never was I never thought about acting and like being the character so the fact that I was able to be a character for this um is definitely something I want to do again or going forward super cool and that's a really good segue so you of course are um not only just an actor but you're also a, a rapper yes. do you want to tell me a little bit more about your side hustle here in addition to acting oh uh I mean being a recording artist uh, it's been like my main passion for like the past five years and it's been going well, been able to do a lot of cool things. It's, it's just also super tight to know that me making music has opened up doors for me to do other things too. So I'm just excited to see where that takes me and what other doors I can open going forward, especially with this on my resume. And as a creative, how do you see the differences and similarities between uh, being a creator in music and being a creator in film that saw this, since you've done both? Similarities, I would say work ethic. It's the same. I think it's the same amount of work ethic. It's the same amount of dedication. It's the same amount of, um, I don't believe in perfection, but I believe in excellence. So I would say it's the same amount of drive to work towards being excellent either if it's in the character or if it's either if it's in the character or it's in my music. I would say difference. It's a lot more nerve wracking, I guess, to, to be acting because mm -hmm. you consciously, you're consistently redoing the same thing over and over. And it's like, you never know which take is going to be the one. So it's kind of like you're working for like the perfect take, but like that might take you 15 to 20, 30 tries compared to like 
me personally, when I write a song, it's kind of like, I'll write a song and once I write it, like that song now is, is done. I don't really go back to my songs unless it's something that like, I feel like really needs fixing, but usually if I'm writing music or recording music, once I feel like I have the take, like that's it, there's no more like, I, it goes on to the next process compared to acting. It's, it has to be perfect or it's not, you know what I mean? So you feel like uh, writing music comes more naturally to you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And the process is just more natural. And I think that really shows, of course, because you've been really successful as of lately. Do you want to tell me about any interesting developments in your music career? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I just dropped my first uh, major feature. I have a song with OG Mako. Um, that's, that came out last month. It's doing really well on Spotify. I think I'm about to break 20,000 soon. Um, I have a project coming out, I want to say early spring. And uh, I actually got my first partner partnership with like um, a college to do some music and do some more stuff. I can't really like say everything about it, but wow. I'm super proud of what we're, what we're doing right now. And I hope that if everything goes how it's planned in my head, it's going to be something really cool, not only for myself, but I think for the city. And do you think it's important to, when you work, do you carry this idea that you're doing it for your city? Yeah, I want to say that I do carry the idea that I am doing it for myself and I want to build um, myself as a brand, like as big as I possibly can. But at the same time, it's, we all feel like, I feel like when you're creating something from the ground up, you're doing it also to represent and showcase what you have, not only, like you build, you, when you build something from the ground up, you're showing what your city is also kind of made of in the sense of what your city can also bring. So that's also something that's really important to me. And um, I think and I think that's really important to all creators. Cause you want you want to wear the pride, you want to wear the pride and love of your city on your sleeve, and you want your city to kind of give you that same energy back. I think that's really interesting because when Connor went out to make this movie, he really had that in mind. He really wanted this to be a Boston film. Yeah, that all Boston. Like, I know. Yeah, he, Boston he, for Boston. Yeah, every time. I think that's really interesting that you and him yeah. share a similar goal. For sure. Mm -hmm. And Dimitri, I just have one final question for you and oh. it's throwing it back to uh, our movie. Well, first and foremost, I want to ask, did you have a good time? Oh yeah, 100%. It was, it was tight. It was nerve wracking. Um, I had a little bit of fear, like acting and being in front of the camera for so long, but I got to conquer that. So that made me a lot more confident in myself going forward when it comes to doing these things. That's awesome. And that's a good segue because my last question is about the movie. Uh, the movie, of course, is about a zombie apocalypse that happens in the city of Boston. So our question for you that we've been asking all of our all of our guests, how would you survive a zombie apocalypse in Boston? I watch a lot of Walking Dead, <laughs> but I think I think I might be in my bag. I'm not sure. I feel like I I survived for a little while. So I, I think first is secured area rations, weaponry, and if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out swinging. <laughs> I respect I that. I yes. really respect yeah. that. Okay, Dimitri, one final thing I need for you. I'm just gonna have you record the quick intro and the quick outro. So it's- Oh, I'm so bad at this. Every time Connor makes you do it, I always fail, but I'm, I'm gonna try my best. Done it before. That's right. You're, you're a champ at this. I, I expect great things from you here, Dimitri. I'm try. So do you want me to go over it again for yeah, you? Yeah, please, please. Okay. So you say, hi, my name is, and this okay. is my golden hour. Okay. Then hi, my name is, and that was my golden hour. All right. All right. Count it off. Okay. In three, two, one. Hi, my name is Why Try. And this is my golden hour. That was Why Try, and that was my golden hour. <laughs> Woo! Did I? Right. 